In the last tutorial, we have learned how the electricity is related to magnetism. In this tutorial, we will learn how electricity is generated. In our last tutorial, we have explained how a magnet can generate a flow of electron inside a conductor. The moving magnetic field can induce a flow of current in a conductor. The direction of the flow depends on the direction of the magnetic field and the motion. As we know, the direction of the magnetic field of the south pole and the north pole of a magnet is opposite to each other. The direction of the current induced in the conductor is highly dependent on them. According to the direction of the flow, we determine the negative, positive and neutral positions. If the induced current in a conductor flows to one direction only all the time, then that is called DC or direct current. Let's see the DC current in action. Now watch carefully the effect of the magnetic field on the conductor. As the magnetic flux line is dense in the two poles of the magnet and gradually decrease to the middle portion of the magnet, the amount of EMF induced in the conductor increases as the pole comes near to the conductor. This is a simulation based on data achieved in laboratory experiment. A bar with north pole in each side is rotated near a conductor. The slides in different position are shown here. See the graph to understand the nature of the curve indicating the EMF induced in different position of the magnet. As the magnetic flux lines are spread in this pattern from the two poles, the nature of the curve is always elliptical and not triangular. Now let's see some more slides to understand the nature of the curve in different position of the magnet. See the direction of the current induced in the conductor is always uniform. This is, that's why, DC current. Now what if the current flows in both the direction in a conductor? Is it possible? Yes, of course it's possible. And we call that current the AC or alternating current. In AC, both the south and north poles of the magnet induce EMF on a single conductor resulting the current flow in both directions. Now see these slides to understand the nature of the curve indicating the EMF induced in different positions of the magnet. We now have some idea about the AC and DC currents. Let's find out how they are generated. This is the animation of a basic DC generator. Watch carefully that the current is induced in two opposite directions in the two parts of a single conductor. To separate the two opposite directional current flow, a special arrangement is used. These two are called the commutators and the carbon brasses. For each revolution, the position of the wire is changing and as a result negative and positive EMF is induced which is cordially being separated in the carbon brass commutator arrangement. In most of the DC generators, more than one coil and subsequent carbon brass plus commutator arrangement is used to increase the efficiency. Now, as we have known DC generation process, let's find out the process of AC generation. The construction of the AC generator is almost same with DC generator. The only difference is that unlike DC generator, AC generators doesn't have carbon brass plus commutator arrangement as they don't have requirement to separate the negative and positive directional current. Instead, they have an arrangement called slip rings where the EMF is obtained.
although in reality alternators are used to obtain AC current. The main difference between the alternator and a generator is that in an alternator the conductor coils are stationary and the magnet is rotating unlike a generator. This eliminates the requirement of slip rings for collecting the current. Another important thing is that the scientists found out that if two more conductor coils can be used then almost 1.5 times of power can be gained using the same effort and arrangement. For the previous single coil system two wires were needed to transmit the power from one place to another. The scientists found out that for three coil system only one more wire is required so the cost is not that much high and almost 1.5 times power is obtained. Thus the concept of three phase power was introduced. Now see the graph of three phase EMF to understand the characteristics of induced EMF in the three coils. An experiment is done to understand the characteristics and the EMF obtained in different position is recorded and plotted in a graph. It's found that the EMF is induced following this law. Now you may ask why 3 phase, why not 6 phase or 9 phase? Well the efficiency increases in 6 phase than 3 phase, also in 9 or 12 phase. But the percentage of increase is less than that of between 3 phase and single phase. In the other hand for 6 phase 6 sets of conductor will be required for 9 phase 9 sets of conductor will be required. So the cost for conductors and other protective devices will be twice or thrice but the power will be less than 1.5 times. So in reality the use of 3 phase power is popular around the world. For driving the alternator the mechanical force is often supplied by the turbine powered by river current, steam or wind. So this was all for today. I hope you liked it. If you like it, please subscribe here our channel and also like our video. And if you have any queries related to this video and any other subject of electrical engineering, you are always free to comment in the comment box. We will try our level best to answer your queries. Thank you.